in people into Zoom and I'll just set up the Facebook stream. Um, so, share page. It's just loading that up. Okay. Just paste in the title and the description. Uh, Okay, so we should be live in about 30 seconds, just putting that through, which is good. Okay. Perfect. So, hello everybody, happy Monday, and welcome to our first webinar of this week. My name is Amanda Pauley, and I am Deputy Editor at PB. And today we've got a great webinar for you. I'm joined by the lovely Jessica Crane, who's a salon consultant, and she's gonna be hosting a money mastery workshop today, talking about how to future proof your salon business and your personal finances to set you up for success. Um, I'll let Jessica kind of go into a bit more detail about what she's gonna be covering, but she's got lots of clients and helps lots of salons. So definitely worth getting a bit of a pen and paper ready for this session. Um, so hi, Jessica, thanks so much for joining us today. Morning, Amanda, how are you? Yeah, I'm not too bad, thank you, how are you? Good, good, thank you. So Jessica, just before I let you take over, I just wanted to say to anybody who's watching, if you do have any questions for Jessica during it, um, if you just comment in the comment box on Facebook and I will make sure to pose them to her at the end. But Jessica, what I'll do is I'll turn my camera and my mic off and I'll let you take over. Awesome, thanks Amanda. Um, awesome, hello everybody. Um, as you're joining us, please do say hi in the comments on Facebook or if you are here with us in Zoom. Um, okay, so I am just going to share my screen. Let's get this up. Okay, so share. Okay. My computer's on a little go slow this morning. Okay, from the start. There we go. Okay, yeah, so today we're going to be talking about Money Mastery Workshop. So we're going to be talking about future-proofing your business and your personal finances. And the reason I like to talk about both is because primarily how you behave with your business finances is always very similar to how you handle your personal finances and the two always kind of go hand in hand so that's why we're going to cover both for today so so what's next so I'm hoping by now that most of you have been back into your salons for a little while and what we've noticed with speaking to lots of salon owners every single week is that a lot of people kind of made themselves lots of promises during lockdown and kind of reevaluated where they were with their business and the goals that they had, the aspirations, and really kind of focusing on getting that home work life balance as well. So a lot of you might have been thinking, you know, what's next? I want to work less, but I want to earn more money. And, um, you know, you might have kind of made all these promises to yourself. And that's what we're going to dive into a little bit more today. How do you actually achieve those goals? Um, and if that was you, please share with us what your goals um, and stuff was when you was in lockdown. So for those of you who haven't met me before, I'm Jessica Crane. And um, I've been in the industry for about 20 years now. And I had my first job in when I was 12 in a salon. And since then, I've managed lots of different salons, small, big chains, independents 
Uh, I've managed a private training provider where we used to teach hair, beauty and business admin. Um, so I'm a qualified teacher in, and internal verifier and I have a degree in consulting and a lot more other qualifications. But my real passion is empowering salon owners just like you to transform from behind the chair and into the business owner and mastering your wealth and finances. But today I want to hear a little bit more about you. So tell me in the comments, how long have you had your salon? What is your biggest struggle at the moment in your salon? And what are your goals for the rest of 20? 20 and also let us know you know what are you hoping to get out of this webinar that we can cover for you today as well and as amanda said as we go through if you've got any questions three please do throw them into the chat and amanda can read them out and we can get all of your questions answered as well so today what we're going to focus on is we're going to look at mastering wealth management we're going to look at money mindset as well and how to recognize and break your money story and the limiting beliefs and patterns that are put in a chokehold on your business growth. And then we're going to come to the Q&A. So like Amanda said, do make sure that you've got pen and paper because there's going to be loads of stuff that you're going to want to write down. So what we're going to do first and foremost is we can't really plan for the future and plan wealth management until we have a really good grasp on where we are right now. So what we're going to do first and foremost is like a full mini personal and business audit. So where are you right now financially with your business and your personal finances? Where do you need to focus on? Where do you need to improve? And then we're going to look at how you can achieve those more longer term wealth goals. OK, so what gets measured gets managed. And this is where in the industry as a whole, I think a lot of us don't measure and manage our finances and our numbers in depth enough. So I want you to think about this. When was the last time you did a full personal and business financial audit? And I'm not talking from your accountant or what your accountant told you. I'm talking where you have dived really, really deep into the numbers and really kind of got a good stead for where you are. Checked what course you're on and altered the direction. So we're going to dive into this a little bit more. Change the destination and took stock of where you're heading financially. Because what we understand is that as a business owner, for most of you, nobody has ever taught you how to handle your finances. You know, it, unfortunately, it's not something that we learn in school. It's not something that we have access to learn easily. You know, nobody's taught you how to handle your finances, your cash flow, taxes, VAT and payroll, all of those kind of practical day to day skills. So for most of us in the industry, we just figure it out as we go along. Right. But along the way, we also learn from others. And it might have been that you learned from your old past employee, from the salon that you used to work in. Maybe you learned from your parents or your friends or acquaintances or books or TV or other environmental factors. And that's OK. But the problem is a lot of the time when you learn from these sources, you can pick up a lot of bad habits and you can take on other people's money stories or limiting beliefs or incorrect information that isn't bespoke or unique to your particular circumstances. And above all, we waste a lot of time getting it wrong. So we speak to salon owners every single week and for some of them, They've struggled for that with their numbers for eight, nine, 10, you know, 15, 20, in some cases, 30 years, right? And they struggle and they waste a lot of time getting it wrong. And, you know, right now has never been so, it's never been as important as it is right now to execute your cash flow and have cash reserves in your business 
and know exactly how to manage them. So, you know, for your business at the moment, cash is absolutely king. And, you know, I was talking to, with, about this with a salon owner the other day um, who's got several salon owners. And he was saying it's sad to see that only those with cash will survive. And it's one of them unfortunate things where it's a survival of the fittest in business at the moment. And we're seeing that even with huge, big brands, you know, retail brands that are going bust. So we need to make sure that we are focusing on cash and how to handle cash flow at the moment. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little task together. So what I want you to do is make sure you've got paper and a pen. And we're going to focus on these three buckets, okay? And we're going to focus on yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And this is going to help you um, identify where your cash flow is going. So debt or borrowed money is yesterday's bucket, right? Money that you've already spent, um, such as mortgage, credit cards, loans, car finance, store cards, stock. And what I mean by stock in here is stock if you don't order it and pay for it on the day. If you have, you know, like a 30 day, 60 day, 90 day rolling credit. Okay, if your stock bills are on rolling credit, you would put them into yesterday's bucket. Salon refurbishments, you know, if you have a refurb and you pay it back over a period of time with a company, anything like that, that's money that's already spent goes into yesterday's bucket. And you'll notice on here we have personal and business, okay? And then we have today. So in this today, what we're talking about in this bucket is cash available, liquid cash that is available to you right now. If you had to go and get your hands on every penny that you own, what would you be able to get your hands on today? So that is like what's in your savings, again, personal and business. What's in your business buffer account um, and a personal buffer account? What is in your actual bank accounts at this second in time? Do you have ISAs that you can draw down today? Do you have cash as in, do you have five grand under a mattress in your house? You know, what do you actually have liquid cash available to you today? And tomorrow, so tomorrow's bucket is all about future cash income sources. So future is like your pensions, stocks, shares, properties, if you own your commercial property, um, premium bonds. Again, I've put ISAs in here because sometimes with some ISAs you have to give, you know, 20 days, 30 days notice before you can draw them down. So what we want to do is do um, a five just a couple of minute activity and have a look at what you have in yesterday's bucket what you have in today's bucket and what you have available to you in tomorrow's bucket and this is both for your personal and for your business okay so those that are on facebook let us know um, as you're completing it um, and those that are joining us live here in Zoom as well, if you can share in the comments as you're going through as well. And the reason why this is a really good task and activity to do is because it's good to look at and analyse, do you have more in yesterday's bucket than you do in today's? Do you have enough in tomorrow's bucket it's good to see where do you have the most for some people it might be yesterday for some people it might be today for some people it might be tomorrow okay so just spend a couple of minutes um having a look at where you have the most in each bucket okay Okay, let me go back. I just want to leave that there just for a second for you. Um, awesome. So 
as well it's really good to look at again your your personal and your business and it's good to kind of ask yourself you know how long can my business survive going forwards without government help because as circumstances are changing and like we just said Amanda like we, we, it is more uncertain now than it was at the beginning because we don't know what help is or is not going to be available as these different tier options come in and um, if we're going to have to close down if we're not going to have to close down so it's good to ask yourself if my business was to close for a week or two weeks or three weeks or four weeks what have I got available to me to see my business through the next period? Okay. And personally as well, because for a lot of you guys who are a business owner, you may not be on payroll. And as we all found out in March, if you pay yourself your salary and dividends and those things, the support isn't there for you. So personally, what can you uh, what have you got available to survive as well? Okay, awesome. So hopefully you've had a little bit of time to kind of look at those buckets and just get a good snapshot of where you are personally and with your business as well. Um, so do share in the comments like sometimes people complete that and they think oh i've got more in this bucket than i thought i've got more in that one than i thought so please do share anything that you find that was interesting to you so what we want to talk about now is your beliefs and skills because as a business owner your whole entire business relies on your beliefs and skills and the business will not be able to grow more than your business or than your beliefs or skills. And the one thing that I want to talk about today is your money story. And your money story is a collection of beliefs that you have formed together over the years from experiences, your upbringing, people around you, the media, social media, stereotypes, and so many environmental factors. And most people are completely unaware of their money story. And some people, you know, today I want to just raise that awareness of your money story and help you figure out your money story so that you can update it and change it as you need to. So as you, your business and your skills grow, your beliefs need to change as well. And in our industry, I don't think we talk about money enough and I don't think we address money mindset enough and it can definitely be the one thing that is kind of causing that glass ceiling on your business because not only is your money story important but it can also be massively holding your team back and their individual money stories as well so which I'm going to dive into a little bit deeper with you now so first I wanted to share because some of you might be thinking you know, I don't know what a money story is. Um, I've never really thought about my money story. Um, I'm not sure how it holds me back. So I want to share with you a little bit about my money story. And I've got a few examples because I think that you definitely have team members who you can see in some of these examples as well. So for me, growing up, I grew up in an environment with a lot of domestic violence, um, a lot of uh, controlling behavior and narcissism. And for me, money equaled freedom and survival. And that was the reason why I went and got my first job in a salon at 12, because I just kind of had this thought that if I earn my own money, I could, you know, get a car, I could drive away, I could get my own place to live, and I would be free of these environments, right? So that was the first thought for me is that money equals freedom and survival. If I can support myself, I don't need to be trapped in these environments, right? And 
for me, I, when I was really small, I lived with my grandparents. So I inherited a lot of their money beliefs as well. And that generation, their kind of money belief was you don't live beyond your means. So for me to this day, that has served me well because I have never, ever, ever gotten into debt. So other than a mortgage, I've never had a credit card, not had cars on finance. I've never spent in yesterday's bucket other than a mortgage, right? So their money story and their money beliefs kind of set me in good stead in some ways. But it's good to recognize the pros and the cons. And I can remember some of the cons came up when I first started my business. And I really wanted to invest in my business, um, you know, in mentors and coaches myself and websites and all these things that you kind of want up and running. But I was also holding myself back because I hadn't yet earned this money. So I was kind of really torn in myself between do I invest in my business, but I've not yet earned the money and but I need to invest in my business in order to grow the business so that kind of really was making me torn at that time because of my money story and I think it's good for you guys as business owners to understand when you're feeling that those torn feelings because of your money story and so that you can then make the correct choices and decisions and understand where those thoughts and that mindset is coming from. Um, and then I wanted to share Stacy's money story because Stacy was a stylist that I met. I was working with her salon owner. So I was doing some coaching with her salon owner and her boss said to me, you know, she's an amazing stylist. She's phenomenal creatively. She's just awesome however she doesn't make me enough money and when it comes to her charging her clients she said she's always undercharging them she won't upsell she won't retail and I just don't know why so I had a little bit of a one-to-one -one with Stacy and we started talking and we started going really deep into her money story and a lot of you might have staff members just like Stacy. She grew up with her, a single mum. She had a single mum parent. And um, Stacy can remember, she was telling me, you know, she can remember coming home from school and her mum would cook her dinner and not eat dinner. And she would say, I knew it was because my mum couldn't afford to buy enough food for both of us to eat. She said, I used to feel really guilty, you know, if you got a letter from school about a school trip or if she needed a new school coat or a school bag or a lunchbox because she knew that her mum just couldn't afford it. And her mum worked two jobs and worked really, really hard. Um, so she said, I always felt so guilty if I ever had to ask my mum for anything because I just knew that we couldn't afford it. And so Stacy's money story is that money is extremely difficult to get and money is very, very sparse. And that she and her mum were always struggling in today's bucket. There was no cash there day to day. They just had no money. And when I asked her, you know, how do you feel when your clients come in and they pay for their hair or their services or whatever, how does it make you feel taking that client's bill and she said that she'd not realized how much of this money story was so subconscious and she said I feel especially if I know that that client is a mom or got a family I feel as though I'm physically taking food off their table she said it makes me feel physically sick and she hadn't realized that this was so subconscious. And, you know, as soon as she started to uncover that money story, she could get over it and replace it with new money beliefs. And I think that with a lot of our clients, I know for sure, and in the industry, we have a lot of staff members who can relate to those money stories. And then I want to share this 
uh, Sarah's money story with you, um, because some of you might relate to Sarah's money story. So I went to school with a girl called Sarah. And um, when I started my apprenticeship, you know, and I'm sure for many of you, I earned 48 pounds a week. And that 48 pounds had to pay for my bus fare, my travel, my hairdressing kit, my, it basically had to cover all of my needs every single week on that 48 pounds. And Sarah went to college, and so she didn't earn any money. But on a Monday, we were both off on a Monday, and sometimes she used to say, you know, do you want to come into town with me? And we would go shopping. And I wouldn't buy anything, and she would go to, you know, Topshop, River Island, Miss Selfridge, all your kind of high street shops, and she would buy things and put them onto store cards. And she constantly was living in yesterday's bucket and racking up debt. And when we both learned to drive, I saved up and bought a car and she had a brand new Mini Cooper on finance. And I think by the age of 22, she was about 25,000 pounds in debt. And it was, I can remember one day I asked her and I said, you know, aren't you worried about how you're going to pay all of this back? And, you know, Sarah kind of looked at me like with this confused face and was kind of like, what do you mean pay it back? As though tomorrow was never going to come. That was literally her mindset of, we'll just keep racking it up on credit cards and store cards and finance and always living in yesterday's bucket as though she was never going to have to pay it back um, and I think that some people can really relate to Sarah's money story as well and just quickly I want to share one more with you um, and that was my friend Tom and his dad owned a business and Tom inherited his money story from his dad they had a family business it was a roofing company and his dad had built this business from scratch and it was now a really big successful business but his dad always had this fear that somehow overnight he was going to lose it all and I think as business owners we often have that fear we grow something and we put so much hard work and effort and time into something that we then have this fear that it's all going to be lost or it's all going to be taken away you know kind of at the snap of the fingers and Tom's dad had really inherited this money story really deep into him and so Tom hoarded money and he was always living in tomorrow's bucket any anything he earned he would save it into savings stocks shares ices he would never spend money he when we learned to drive he would just drive one of the, his dad's vans he would he wouldn't go on holiday because he wouldn't spend the money so he literally had inherited his dad's fear and would not spend money he would hoard it he would invest it which again has its pros and cons so we're not saying here any money story is correct or it's right or it's wrong but it's good for you to understand your money story and how it affects your behavior what are the pros from your money story and what are the cons so what good things do you implement because of your money story but what areas hold you back because of your money story? So it's great to think of your money story and think, you know, try some new beliefs. Try, see how it makes you feel. You know, I want you to think about money right now, even the word, what comes up for you when we say the word money? Do you have positive or negative thoughts? Do you feel indifferent about it? Do you feel that there's a lack of money or an abundance of money? How does earning or investing money feel to you? Does it feel a struggle when you've got to invest in things for your business? Does it feel a struggle or does it feel easy? Does money flow easily and frequently or does money feel hard to get? 
Think about how you feel when we say each of those statements. And then from today, what I would like you to do, you know, and go away and take a little bit of time to do this, is to write down your current money story. What did you learn from your parents? How did those stories impact your beliefs about money? Do your current beliefs support the life and the business that you want? You know, if you kind of have this belief that you won't earn a certain amount of money, then is that support in the life that you want to create? What would you do differently if you could rewrite your money story? Would a new money story support your happiness? What would support you in building a new money story for you and your family? And this is this last statement is one that I really love because it makes us more conscious. Create a money story you would want your children to hear and learn. So equally in the past, you've learned from your parents, but you are now teaching your, pair, your children and your family and you're forming their money story. So we're gonna shoot back to Amanda for um, any questions that have come in. Um, and then we've just shot up there if you want to follow on our Instagram page and we have a free Facebook group, um, which we put lots of tools and resources and stuff as well. And at the moment and throughout lockdown, we've been offering free 50 minute business consultations for any salon owners who kind of want to just spend a little bit of time one to one um, and go through um, any questions with us as well and you can find that on the website there um, so Amanda back to you yeah. is there any I've been very conscious of time today because I think without <laughs> any webinar I could literally talk for about three hours no it was really interesting thanks so much Jessica and I think um, what you said as well about our beliefs when it comes to money really impacts how we feel and what we do with it and actually the more you were going into it I was even sort of just doing it personally myself writing some things down um, but we've had a few questions come through and obviously anybody who's watching if you do have any questions for Jessica pop them in the comment box and we will talk um, so Laura on Facebook has said that she's self-employed in a salon and white space is her biggest issue at the moment. Do you have any advice for her? Yeah, so with white space and because you're self-employed, obviously you want to be generating appointments for yourself. So I think what you want to focus on every single day is your main tasks is to generate appointments and to complete appointments. That is what you need to funnel down and focus on and think, how have I generated new appointments today? And that might be getting your clients into one place, such as a Facebook group, or you know, sending messages on direct messenger to your clients. I think what people are trying to focus on is being reactive rather than proactive and waiting for people to come to them when you know this is the time you need to kind of roll up your sleeves and get proactive and you need to be reaching out to those clients it might be are they a little bit worried have they got questions and they don't feel that they can ask us you know call call those clients that haven't been in direct message them on Facebook, build that relationship again um, and kind of reassure them and make them feel happy and confident to come back to the salon. Um, and in your case, I would just focus on generating appointments and completing appointments. Brilliant. Thanks, Jessica. And I hope that's answered your question, Laura. Um, we've had another question on Facebook from Felicity. Um, and she said that she's had her salon for 20 years and she's got three kids, but she wants to manage more and get her staff working harder so that there's less less white space, but with her managing the team more rather than doing treatments as much as she is. What would be your advice for how she could start to make that move? Yeah, so this, to be honest, this is exactly what we specialise in with coaching our clients. It's moving from being the hairdresser or therapist into your business and transitioning into being the business owner. Um, and yeah, that's exactly kind of what our program does. 
Um, if I'm honest, what I would recommend you do is book a free 50 minute business consultation with my team because they'll be able to spend a good hour one to one with you and go through how you can exactly make that happen. Um, and they'll be able to get to know your business on a more personal level um, and be able to kind of create a bit of a plan with you one to one. Um, because obviously it's difficult without knowing your personal circumstances to kind of really dive deep into that question. Um, but we would love to offer you the free consultation and, you know, one of the team will be able to go really deep into exactly how you can um, execute that. Brilliant. Thanks, Jessica. And actually Felicity said one other thing and actually somebody else said it as well about um, having always lived in yesterday's bucket since kind of being a student and that they don't seem to be able to get out of that situation. I mean, how would Jay, how would they go about that? I guess that student debt, you know, the student loans is probably the start of it. Um, and so they've always been trying to play catch up, I guess. Yeah, we get this a lot. So for a lot of salon owners, you know, even in the beginning opening your salon, you might heavily be in yesterday's bucket because you've had to forward pay X amount of rent. You've had to then have the salon refurbished or fitted into your salon. You know, there's a lot of outgoings that have happened before you've even generated money. So a lot are starting on the back foot. They're starting on yesterday. Plus then obviously, like you just said, they might have personal um, previous debt from student, being a student, etc. cetera. Um, Absolutely. So this is where I'll tell you, I'll tell you Louise's story. So Louise, one of our clients, she started and she had exactly the same. She had quite a lot in yesterday's bucket from starting her business. Um, and actually over lockdown, she started with us at the beginning of the year and Louise was making minus 13% profit every single month. So she was making a loss and she already had a lot in yesterday's bucket, right? Mm -hmm. So we worked with her and we what we did first and foremost was we increased her profit. So we patched all the holes in her business because some of your treatments and services might not actually be profitable. And for her, her top four services made her a loss. So we quickly kind of put all the, you know, stopped all the leakages in the business and she increased to 29% profit. So now every month she's making around 30% profit. So what she was quickly able to do was to then take that 30% profit that her business made and pay off all of her yesterday's debt. So over the period of lockdown for her, a March was her most profitable month. And we're now in October and she has paid off all of her debt, which she was struggling to do for eight years. She's paid off all of her debt. She pays herself a wage, which is the first time she's done that in a really long time. And, you know, now she's kind of got that clean slate that going forwards from this month, she all the profit that she earns, she can put in tomorrow's bucket now instead of yesterday. And so really the key is becoming profitable so that you can use that profit to pay off your debt first and foremost. You can pay off your debt. You can then build some cash funds for today. And then with excess profit going forwards, you can start focusing on wealth management and tomorrow's bucket. And at a very high level, at a 30,000 foot view, that's what we do with our clients. We eliminate yesterday, we build cash reserves for today, and then we focus on cash reserves for tomorrow. Mm. No, that's really helpful advice. Um, we've had a couple of people just saying, you know, that they need to be more proactive in kind of changing their money story. What's kind of your best advice for people starting that at the moment? Because I guess as well, the news is full of a lot of doom and gloom at the moment. So sometimes it might feel like it's slightly impossible or going to be so challenging to do that. Where should people start at the moment, given everything that's going on? Yeah, I think that's a really good question. I think that one, we have to remember that this is temporary. Um, we are in an industry that we are never going to be replaced. People will always want their hair doing. 
people will always want beauty treatments people will always want to look good and you know typically um obviously other than our business is physically being closed but typically you know you even look back at world war one and lipstick sales increased you know mm. people will always find that money we are a recession proof industry which we've proved time and time and time again so we will recover we will come back stronger than ever we you know with with you know people focusing on mental health and all the rest of it we're not an industry that is going to disappear so i think it's one having that belief that your business our industry will be fine i think it's building those affirmations that you know what is possible for you i think that if you I think that really strong money affirmations is a really good starting point for you and building that belief, knowing that you are capable of building a really successful business. Um, yeah, we just need, we just need our businesses open. That's what we need. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jessica, thank you so much. And just for everybody who's asking about whether they can watch this from the start, you can. As soon as this has ended, it will be on PB's Facebook page indefinitely under the video. So you'll be able to go back and watch it from the start. And we'll also be putting it on our YouTube channel tomorrow if you'd rather prefer to watch it on that. But you can go back, take notes down. I know a lot of you guys were saying about you want to go back and take more notes, so you can do that. Um, but Jessica, thank you so much for joining us again on a PB webinar. Um, it's been brilliant again. You've given such valuable advice. So we really, really appreciate it. Oh, no, thank you. Yeah, like I said, it is a topic we could do for about three yeah. or four hours. I'm sure so. we'll probably have you back and get you doing a part two. Um, <laughs> But for the time being, I just want to say thank you so much from the PB team. And, you know, I'm sure that um, I'll see you at some point today or some point in the future. And lots of people are saying they've really appreciated this talk. So I think it's been really good for people. It's kind of a boost that they've needed. Um, oh, but yeah, thank you so you. much, Jessica. Um, but yeah, I'm sure I'll see you soon. And for everybody else, there's a few more PB webinars this week. There's an autumn um, now demo with um, Kaylee Carnes, which is going to be really good. Um, and I think that's the next one this week. So check it out. Okay, well, thank you so much, Jessica. See you Thanks, later. Amanda. See you bye. soon. See you. Bye.